Hey, what's happening, Forum? Do y'all like treasure? Do y'all like making money and stacking paper? Well, I have good news for you. Because in this video, I'm going to be showing y'all how you can make more gold and looted value in as short a time as possible than you'll know what to do with through Northern Rares and Treasures. In this video, I'm going to do a brief rundown of chest locations as well as some of the rares, notable items, and show y'all what I get after running around the entirety of Northrend. Anyways, that being said, let's just get right into the video. The first zone I'm starting in is Howling Fjord, which has a pretty decent amount of chests, and three rares that drop unique items. King Ping drops the Egg Warming Blanket, a cloth robe that is last sold this month actually for around 40,000 gold on my server. Vigdis the War Maiden drops the Soul Sealed Belt, which hasn't seen a listing on my server for over three years. Parabus the Bloodthirster, in the northern portion of the zone, drops the Worgen Scores Shackles, which last went for around 10,000 gold a couple months ago on my server. Before I continue to the next zone, I want to stress how important it is that you do this while on a rogue, specifically Outlaw, for the Find Treasure passive that it has. Even with map locations like I have, it's entirely possible to overlook chests, so, to ensure that you're collecting every chest possible, I would recommend farming on Outlaw, as you can guarantee that you won't be missing any. The next zone that I move into is Grizzly Hills, being just north of Howling Fjord. Groklar is going to drop the Rock Giant's Pinky Cover, Mail Gloves that was last listed around 9,000 gold on my server. Arcturus drops the Pristine Glow Bear Pelt, which can list anywhere from 50 to 75,000 gold. Be careful when killing Arcturus though, since you can make Hunter players extremely salty if they witness you killing their beloved pixels in front of them. I personally think Hunter players should grow up, but that's just my opinion. Speaking of Seething Hate, Seething Hate drops the Icker Stain Wraps, which list for around 5,000 gold on my server. The last rare in Grizzly Hills is Saraian, who drops Saraian Leggings which are currently listed for 43,000 gold across all US realms. Definitely one of the better zones for farming treasures and rares, since there is a decent spread of chests which you can find in these locations. If you're farming two zones, might as well make it three, am I right? Zoldrak, unlike the previous two zones, only has sturdy treasure chests as opposed to the mix of maple wood and sturdy that Grizzly Hills and Howling Fjord had meaning that you have less of an item pool to work with, but it's still good nonetheless. The zone also has four rares that drop unique items, as well as all the rares in both Northrend and Outland have unique loot tables, but I'm saving that for another video. We encounter the first rare that in my opinion isn't worth spending the couple minutes looking for with Terror Spinner. It drops the Calcified Web Spalters, an item that sees frequent listings lower than a thousand gold even on my server, which has extremely bloated numbers, mostly thanks to me. On top of that, Gondria, another rare located in Zul'drak, drops a ring, so you might as well write that rare off too, unless you're trying to get Frostbitten, an achievement you should have gotten with War Mode during Shadowland Season 4 when quite literally nobody was playing the game. The Zul'drak Sentinel drops the Eternal Observer's Leg Plates, which are currently listed around 11,000 gold on my server. The final mob, and the only mob that makes running around Zul'drak worth it, Gregan, drops the Ethereal Terror Hand Wraps which last listed for 80,000 gold on my server. The next zone that I meander over towards is Dragonblight. Honestly, you can go to Storm Peaks and rotate around Northrend counterclockwise, but the route that I usually take leads me to the southern end of Zul'drak, so it's more comfortable for me to do Dragonblight and make my way clockwise around the zone. You do you though, doesn't matter what I say. The zone is pretty sparse with chests, but it makes up for it by being pretty compact in search area, so you're spending most of your time just traveling rather than zigzagging scanning for chests. Scarlet Highlord Dion drops the Highlord's Padded Leg Guards, which go for around 14,000 on my server. Tokamuth drops the Mammoth Riding Boots, which are currently listed for 9,000 gold across all US realms. Being so close to Wormrest Temple, I wouldn't get your hopes up as far as getting a kill goes. The last rare in the zone is the Crazed Indule Survivor, who drops the Sealford Spalders, a uh, listing for around 38,000 gold across all US realms. Borean Tundra, being one of the smaller zones in Northrend, doesn't have a particularly large amount of chests compared to that of Howling Fjord, but you can find them in these locations. 
The rares here, however, do drop some particularly valuable items, which does give the zone some merit in my opinion. Icehorn drops the Mammoth Hair Crown, which last listed for around 25,000 gold on my server. Fumblub Gearwin, with his goofy ass name, drops the aptly named Fumblub Seat Cushion, which most recently listed at an appropriate 69,000 gold on my server. The last rare in the zone, Old Crystal Bark, drops Crystal Bark's toenail, plate gloves that list for around 12,000 gold on average across US realms. While Borean Tundra may not be the strongest zone as far as farming for rares and treasures goes, the next one is sure to make up for it. Shalazar Basin is a zone littered with both chests and rares. You can find the chests around the zone in these locations, and since most of them aren't particularly clustered, you're almost guaranteed to find a few since a lot of them don't compete for spawning with one another, unlike the other zones, which have quite large spawn competition ranges, meaning that you are often scanning large swaths of area for one chest. Much like Gondria and Zul'Drak, King Crush drops a ring, so he's not worth killing unless you don't have Frostbite, which you should. Aotona drops Aotona's Collar, which most recently listed for 5,000 gold on my server. The last rare in Shalazar is Loch Nahak, an extremely popular hunter pet that is often camped by several players at any given time on any given day, meaning if you manage to secure a kill on Loch Nahak, my respect for you has increased drastically. You go champ. Show those huntards who's boss. That being said, Loch Nahak drops a cloak that is currently listed for over a million gold on one US realm, meaning that if you do manage to get a kill on probably one of the hardest mobs to get a kill in the game on because of hunters, enjoy the fat paycheck. You earned it. The next zone of course is Ice Crown, which is peppered with a decent amount of chests as well as having rares with easy to follow paths. Hythane Jorfus drops the Corroded Face Guard, which last listed for around 5,000 gold on my server. Hildana Deathstealer drops the Valkyr Vestments, which go for around 12,000 gold across US realms. Both of these mobs spawn across the zone with different routes, so they can be kind of annoying to find. Almost as annoying as finding Putrus the Ancient, who runs a lap around the middle of the entire zone, who also happens to drop a pair of bracers worth so little I didn't even bother saving the JPEG to flash on the screen. It really is that bad. If you're going to skip a zone to save yourself time, Ice Crown is definitely one of two. Of course, it's still worth going around and scanning for chests, as there are some particularly high ticket items that could be found in them. But in my opinion, none of the rares are worth killing. Serious waste of time. You'd be better off farming crabs on Darkshore. The final zone in Northrend, so long as you were going clockwise like me, is the Storm Peaks, which has a myriad of chests in locations littered across the land. Now, the only part of the zone that's worth flying around is the western side, as the entire east side is that polar bear riding thing that is a gigantic waste of time since you should have gotten your polar bear mount back when it was current content, you pathetic lobby. Now, there are four rares in the zone, but there's actually only three since the Time Lost Proto Drake shares a timer with Viragosa. If the Time Lost Proto Drake is up, then sucks to suck since it doesn't drop anything of value like Viragosa does. Viragosa, if up, drops the Azure Dragon Leather Helm, an item with the extremely stable value ranging between 2 and 200,000 gold at any given time across US realms. Skull, one of the regular rares in the zone that doesn't have a stupid gimmick, drops Skull's Fang, a dagger that usually lists for around 14,000 gold in my realm. The last rare in the zone is Durky, who drops an impressive mace that lists for around 200,000 gold on average across all US realms. I'm not gonna lie, farming this zone is a complete waste of time unless you like gambling with spawns since this zone is permacamped by Boblo normies who want their pixelated yellow lizard to never ride around on since it doesn't dragon ride. Like I said, you're probably better off farming crabs in Darkshore since at least you'll be guaranteed to make money doing that. Running around the entirety of Northrum took me about an hour and a half and I was able to loot 24 chests and kill 3 rares for a total of 27 items worth a combined 348,863 gold, equivalent to roughly 240,000 gold per hour, or slightly less than a WoW token per hour. Of course, you may have better luck with rares when farming on war mode, but it's the middle of the work week and to be honest, I can't really be bothered. This farm, much like most transmog related farms, is probably worth doing once or twice a year depending on your server's population and how frequently you sell Northrend related transmog items. 
Anyways, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like. And if you didn't like the video, talk to your local representative. Make sure to subscribe because my manager said if I don't reach 1k subscribers soon, I'll have to start making my videos in Arabic as well. Anyways, as always, peace.